you, my friend, had one job. One job. You also had one job. Just one. Whoever did this, yep, you guessed it. One job. One. Only one. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy New Year 2023. Boom, here we go. I'm excited. A uh, beautiful Christmas break with my family. By December 26th, I think my blood was pretty much in like 85% milk chocolate and feeling groovy. Excited to be back with you all. And we are now out of the Christmas season and into another stretch of ordinary time which just leads us right up to Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. And we start with a fascinating part of Jesus' story, his cousin, John the Baptist. And John has one job. Listen to this. This is a reading according to the Gospel of John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and I've testified that this is the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You ever been asked to do something simple and then messed it up? <laughs> you had one job. John, however, was asked by God to do one thing, and he nailed it. He had one purpose for existence, and his purpose was to simply prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. See, these four Gospels put together this coherent account of the life of Jesus. And different gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, cover different parts of Jesus' life, and they focus on different things. But in this one, we can presume that just prior to this, John witnessed in the baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit descending upon him. And he describes it like it was a dove that came down from heaven. And if you read the account of the baptism of Jesus, we hear that God's voice was heard by everybody who was present. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And John's entire life had been leading up to that very moment. He had known from God through his time in prayer and solitude in the desert. He knew that God was giving him a sign that when you see the Holy Spirit rest on this person and it remains there, then you know you're looking at the Messiah, that that's the one that Israel has been waiting for. And here's the big moment. This is John's big deal. Jesus has come. He comes down to the water. John baptizes him. The Spirit descends on him like a dove and rests on him and stays there. And the light bulb goes off and John's it. You're it. You're the one. That's it. It's official. It's confirmed. And then John says, just like you would hear somebody say in court, he testifies. Under oath, he says... This is how it is. This is what's true. And John says, I myself have seen and I have testified that this is the Son of God. And in that moment, John fulfills his one job, his one purpose for which God put him on the planet. Isn't that a cool thing to know that I was here for one reason and I did it. I came through. I made it. I, I, I did what I was asked to do and I did it well. And from there, John turns some of his disciples over to Jesus, and John sort of fades into the background. In fact, he's captured and turned, put into prison where he loses his life. 
under the rule of Herod. John steps aside and says, now it's Jesus. I'm done. I did my part. It's over. We're not much different. We're not much different. God has created each one of us, each one of you, with a particular purpose to accomplish what He would like to accomplish through you on this planet, with the people in your life, the place that He's put you. And that's the role. That's what we're, that's what we're up to. That's our job. We get close to God, just like John did, close to God for our entire lives, and we listen, we pay attention, we, and we recognize that that's why I'm here. Or maybe just feel it deep inside. I was created for this. I'm made for this. And God's like, you sure are. I made you that way. Now let's go. Let's do it. I'm with you. You are my beloved. And I'm well pleased with you. What's God put you here for? Maybe you've got a friend. You can ask that question. Come and ask me. I'll help you figure it out. We'll see where we get. Some days I'm still wondering. I'm still trying to figure it out. But it's a way that we can get closer to God and understand God's purposes. Find that one job. Do it to the best of your ability. Become close to the one who created you. And your life is going to be something to behold. Love y'all. Glad to be back. Good to see you again, and we'll see you next week.